students now let us have a look at the kingdoms in south india starting with the cholas Mutayyar a minor chiefly family held power in the Kaveri Delta these were subordinates to the Pallavas of Kanchipuram Vijayalaya who belonged to the ancient chiefly family of the Cholas from Urayur captured the Kaveri Delta area from Muttarayar in the middle of the 9th century he built the Tanjavur town and a temple of goddess Nishumba Dasini there eventually the successors of vijayalaya captured the neighboring kingdoms and regions and expanded them both in terms of size as well as power the pandyas on the south and the pallava territories on the north became a part of the chola kingdom raja raja 1 who was considered as the most powerful chola ruler acquired power in 981 ad and expanded control over most of the areas raja raja 1 reorganized the administration of the empire during his rule his son rajendra 1 continued his policies and developed navies and raided the regions of ganga valley sri lanka and countries of southeast asia the big temples of tanjavur and gangaikonda cholapuram which were built by raja raja and rajendra stand as architectural marvels the chola temples acted as the nuclei around which many settlements emerged which were also centers for crafts the temples were given lands by the kings as well as by others the produce from the land was used for the maintenance of the people who worked in the temples like the priests the garland makers the cooks the sweepers the musicians and the dancers and so on students this was how the temples acted not only as the places of worship but also was a hub for economic social and cultural life also the making of bronze statues was one of the distinctive craft associated with the temples Most of the bronze statues were of the deities while they also include statues of devotees as well. The Chola bronze sculptures are renowned around the world for their fine craftsmanship. Students now Let us learn about agriculture and irrigation during those days. The new developments in agriculture during the Chola period were responsible for many achievements of the Cholas. River Kaveri branches off its many small streams before it merges into the Bay of Bengal. As the streams overflowed frequently, they deposited fertile soil on the banks. The streams also provided the required moisture for agriculture and for cultivation of rice. Students, now let us have a look at the different types of land mentioned in the Chola inscriptions. Velanvagai, which means lands of the non-Brahmana peasant proprietors. Brahmadeya which means the lands gifted to brahmanas shalabhoga which means the lands for maintenance of school devadana tirunamattukanni which means the land gifted for the temples palli chandanam which means the land donated to jain institutions students we have learned that the brahmanas received brahmadeya or land grants This resulted in the emergence of a large number of Brahmana settlements in the Kaveri Valley as in the other parts of South India. Students, who do you think took care of the Brahmadeyas? The Brahmadeya were looked after by the sabha or assembly of prominent Brahmana landlords. The assemblies efficiently worked while the decisions of the sabha 
were recorded as inscriptions on the stone walls of the temple. The Nagarams, which were the associations of traders, also took care of the administrative functions in towns occasionally. Even though agriculture developed earlier in the other parts of Tamil Nadu, large-scale cultivation began only from the 5th or 6th century. The forest had to be cleared while the land was leveled in the other regions. Embankments were built in the delta regions to prevent flooding and canals were built to provide irrigation to the fields. Two crops were grown in a year in many regions. Sometimes the crops needed to be watered artificially. <coughs> Students, the people used a number of methods for irrigation. In some areas, wells were dug while huge tanks were constructed to collect rainwater in other places. Students, the irrigation activities involve planning, which means organizing labor, resources and maintenance of the works and decisions on how the water is to be shared. The new rulers as well as the people in the village were actively interested in these activities. The administration consisted of king with the council of ministers to help him. The kingdom was divided into mandalams or provinces which were further divided into Walandus or Nadus. The settlements of peasants which were known as Ur became prosperous with the growth of agriculture and irrigation. The groups of villages formed larger units which were called Nadus. The village council along with the Nadu was responsible for the several administrative functions that included dispensing justice and collection of taxes. The rich peasants of the Velalakas held the control over the affairs of the Nadu under the supervision of the central Chola government. Titles like Muvain the Velen, which means a Velen or peasant serving three kings, Arayar, which means chief, were given to some rich landowners by the Chola kings as a mark of respect. The landlords were also given important office of the state at the center. The inscriptions from Uttara Merur in Chingalpeet district in Tamil Nadu points out how this sabha was organized. According to the inscriptions, the sabhas had separate committees to look after irrigation, temples, gardens, etc. Students, do you know how the members were selected for the committee? The names of the eligible members of the committee were written on the palm leaves, which were placed in an earthen pot. A young boy would then be asked to take out the leaves one by one for each committee. This was how the new kings and new kingdoms emerged after the 7th century in our country. 